In the next few videos, we're going to take a look at the fundamentals and conventions of organic chemistry with the aim of getting familiar with the language of organic chemistry and how it relates to some of the more fundamental ideas that you've learned in introductory chemistry. Let's begin with a discussion of the elements of organic chemistry and a review of their most important periodic trends. The elements of organic chemistry are generally considered to be hydrogen and a select number of nonmetals on the right-hand side of the periodic table, including boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine in the second row, a number of third row elements such as silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine, and even some third row elements, especially bromine and the element iodine in the fourth row in group 17 is also an important player in organic chemistry. These are elements that generally form covalent compounds and in particular, thanks to the structural diversity of elements like carbon and nitrogen, which form a large number of bonds, the structural diversity of organic compounds is massive. Interestingly, despite this diversity, the abundance of the organic elements in the universe is actually quite small. If we look, for example, at the most abundant elements in the universe, hydrogen leads with about 75%, but helium, lithium, beryllium, all three of these are non-organic elements, and even boron, which we consider an organic element kind of in an honorary sense, is found most often in the universe in an inorganic context. On the other hand, if we look at the abundance of the elements in the human body, we see a totally different situation. With the top four elements here, oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen, serving as the key players in organic chemistry, it's really these four that are the foundational elements of organic chemistry. We also see some of our other important players, such as phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine showing up very high in this list as well. Now that we've identified the elements of organic chemistry, the next natural question is, how do these elements behave? And we can think about this in terms of periodic trends. The most important periodic trend in all of organic chemistry, without question, has to do with electronegativity. Electronegativity is defined as the strength with which an atom attracts electrons to itself in covalently bound molecules. So one way to think about this is for an element like, uh, for example, fluorine. In the vast majority of compounds in which fluorine finds itself, where it's covalently bound to other atoms, CF bonds, OF bonds, NF bonds, etc., the fluorine is partially negatively charged. This implies that it's attracting electrons to itself, right? Electrons are spending more time or have larger density, to be a little more correct, on the fluorine atom than they do on the other atom involved in the partnership, which might be partially positive, at least relative to the fluorine atom, right? This is indicative of a highly electronegative atom. And because these partial charges tell us a lot about reactivity, and we'll expand on this a little bit later, understanding the trend in electronegativity across the periodic table gives us really great insight into organic structure and the distribution of charges within organic molecules. So let's remind ourselves of the basic trends here. As we move from bottom to top along a group, from further down to further up the periodic table, we find that electronegativity increases. Valence electrons get closer to the nucleus because the valence shell is closer to the nucleus, and so those electrons are held more tightly by the positively charged nucleus. Moving left to right across a period on the table, we find that electronegativity also increases. And this has to do with the idea of effective nuclear charge, that as we add protons to the nucleus, the effective nuclear charge increases. And so we increase in electronegativity since the electrons are feeling a greater positive charge as a result of the greater effective nuclear charge. So what does this tell us? Well, intuitively then, Fluorine is the most electronegative element on the periodic table, but oxygen, nitrogen, and even carbon aren't that far behind in the grand scheme of the periodic table as a whole. So the organic elements tend to be relatively electronegative as compared to, for example, the metals like lithium and beryllium on the left-hand side of the periodic table. This has important implications for compounds that contain both metals and the organic elements, known as organometallics, which we'll explore just a little bit in Chem 2311 and look at in more detail in Organic 2. I'm going to keep the trend in electronegativity up on this slide in talking about atomic size because we can think of atomic size as a consequence of the periodic trend in electronegativity. By atomic size, we're referring to something like the radius of the atom, and what we find is 
as we move from bottom to top, from the bottom of a group up toward the top, atomic size decreases. And as you might expect for a trend that is, and as you might expect for a trend that really has electronegativity at its root, as we move left to right across a period, atomic size also decreases. The atomic size trend is a great example of the power of electronegativity as a concept. In thinking about atomic size as we move left to right across a period, we can imagine that the atom holds its electrons more tightly on the right-hand side of the periodic table than it does on the left-hand side of the periodic table where the atom is quite a bit less electronegative. We can think qualitatively about this pulling of electrons effect, the large electronegativity and the holding on to electrons as resulting in a smaller atom as the electrons are pulled closer to the nucleus. This is what we mean when we say that the atomic size trend is a consequence of electronegativity. And I'll just briefly mention before leaving this slide that the trend going from bottom to top along a group has more to do with the principal quantum number and the valence shell, the size of the orbitals in the valence shell, than it does with electronegativity per se, but the trend still follows the electronegativity trend.